All right, so we're here with Elder Scrolls. We're going to be playing through the Jailbreak introduction. Um, and for that, there is a bit of flavor to lead us into the game proper. So I'll hand that off to you. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, we're doing a Jailbreak introduction encounter. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read the, the little intro here. Okay. You awaken in a dark, rough-walled holding cell somewhere in Tamriel. Which is a pretty familiar beginning for Elder Scrolls, right? <laughs> Uh, you've been imprisoned for some charge or another, protesting your innocence in vain all the while, but it seems you're stuck here for the time being. As you resign yourself to some time cooling your heels behind bars, however, a weathered-looking red guard approaches your cell, clutching a key in his hand. You sit up and take notice. You there, he says, oh, well, hold on, he says it in a coarse whisper. Yeah, give me a voice. You there, <laughs> he says in a coarse whisper. Listen, my name is Bodine. I represent a guild of like-minded individuals called the Outer Watch. We are small, preferring to remain behind the scenes, but we work for the betterment of communities all around Damriel. We help people advocate for themselves, assist places that need it, expose political corruption, and more. You look at him blankly. You're in a jail cell, after all, and you've never seen him before in your life. Right, he says, remembering himself. I'm here because the Watch believes you have potential. <laughs> Too much to be locked away here for God's know how long, subject to the whims of corrupt jailers. Now you're really paying attention. <laughs> I will let you out of here, continues, flashing his key. What you do after is up to you. The watch needs good help these days as one of our number, a wood elf named Deslandra, has gone rogue. She's decided that the watch was thinking too small, that for justice to truly come to Tamriel, the only solution is to get rid of magic completely. She believes this will be the great leveler, keeping the magically powerful from preying on the weak. But how much would be lost in the process? We need to help stop her as our resources are considerable, but we won't force anything on you. This is, he chuckles, an unconditional release. His key turn the lock, turns the lock and he's gone. You consider his words, but before you decide how to make your way to Tamriel, you must first escape. Yep. So we are going to be escaping the prison. Um, for the introduction, we have set you up with four pre-built characters. So you would be, to set this up for yourself, if you're playing, you'd set up, you'd grab your own race of your choice, you'd grab a skill line of your choice. Um, if you're skipping the jailbreak entirely, you'd grab a class card. But for the case of this, we're going to be earning our classes today. Um, yeah, this is literally intro of intro, the game. Intro, intro, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in jail. We're getting these five specific enemies putting them in our bag and we're giving them a shuffle. And then for the sake of this intro, we have set ourselves to one XP. If you were skipping it, you'd be setting yourself to two. But since we're at one XP, there's four players. Are we all playing here? Uh, I think <laughs> three of us are. Three players yeah. here, <laughs> three times one, because we have one group XP. We're gonna draw three enemies from this bag and they're gonna populate onto this tile in the order of I, one, two, three. I will hand them to you. Yes, I would love that. All right. Ship one, we have picked the Spriggan. Oh, that doesn't look good. Ship two, we have picked a Skellington. Sure. And ship three, we have the Argonian Bandits, who is back here. We got one more? Nope. Yeah. No, that's it? Oh, that's yeah. right, three. Yep. Yeah, play count times XP, so. Two health on this skeleton. I'll give you a bit of an overview on how the chips work here. So your goal in this is to either all of you escape or you defeat everything. So you are going to be populating your characters here. So Can we do that now or? Yeah. And you're going to also be dictating a first player. So that's going to be with your health stack. Um, oh, with my health stack. With yeah, yeah. Your full healthy, healthy boy. Um, one of you gets to be the first player, whoever you choose to go first. So you can make that choice amongst yourselves. Nick, you get to go first. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Send in the archer first. Oh, he's the archer. Wait. <laughs> no, I am going to make it Steven. Yeah, Steven's the yeah. tank man. There you go. So. And then if you could hand me the uh, one of those little gold chips next to you in that tray. Yeah, just one. Perfect. So there is a singular treasure chest in the middle of the board. Um, so these enemies have been dictated based on what your actions are in this scenario. That will dictate what classes you get to see when you're choosing a class. Because 
kind of like what were you most interested in doing during this thing it's a little personality test like in the old elder scrolls games um so your goal here is to either kill all the enemies or all of you escape escaping happens when you touch these three tiles here they are highlighted in the rule book to let you know for sure i'm not just making this up off my off the dome so this is the uh the, the game map right here and uh the this is where we escape yes right? okay so cool any anyone who ends their turn here will be leaving the map or i believe it leaves at the end of the round technically uh, right all players act before the enemies act and as soon as all players have acted every enemy will activate so you can get moving you can get to bashing um, your player movement is equal to your stamina. That is also how many stamina-based dice you can roll. You only have stamina-based dice, so that is important for you. Um, each of your races does have a once-per-battle ability. Important to be mindful about what that does. Yours can shard off a hit. Yours can do a lockpick for free and get some movement. I don't remember what yours does. Once-per-battle, when you overtax an axe or a helmet, return that item to your pack instead of discarding Ooh. it. You may then move a different item in your pack to a ready slot. That's cool. Yeah, it makes you really good at hitting, hitting with people with weapons. So before we before we dive in, I have a, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um. There's there's been many Elder Scrolls video games. Yes. Uh, they they traverse multiple eras. Yes. Where does this game fit into the timeline? Yeah. So this is technically an Elder the Elder Scrolls Online. Oh, okay. The time Got it. Going with, okay. Which is long before any of the like console games. So Got it. We're talking like hundreds, I believe, close to a thousand years before. It might that might be a little. Our lore guy's out out front, who's been handling all the writing Got on it. the game, so he could okay. answer that for sure. But this is for the intents of the game. It's set during the events that are happening in Elder Scrolls Online. So during Elder Scrolls Online, there's a big bad called like Nana Marco who's trying to attach oblivion to Tamriel or to yeah. Urn or uh, I, I can't remember the, the name of the plane off the top of my head or how to pronounce it. Deslandra, who is the villain of our game, is one of his lieutenants who is trying to do this betrayal, the betrayal of the second era that the game's called. She's trying to use the magic and the distraction of this event to do her own thing, which is trying to sunder off a new plane where there is no magic. And she is the only one who has magic, so she can make sure everyone is uh, good, good. Which awesome. Is, awesome, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. But yeah, that's the events of it. Right now, you don't, you know a little bit because of what Bodine told you. But outside of that, you will be, once you're in the game proper, you'll be taking up how the game proper works. You shuffle up all the guild cards. You deal yourself like three. And you get to choose to take a contract with one of these guilds. You're not joining the guild. You're just taking up a contract, and through a three-part campaign, you are going to like find about to find out stuff about Desalandra's like meddling in the in the world. Uh, so yeah, that's the overview. All right, and then you can get into some combat. It's pretty All right, let's let's let, let's stuff. dig in. Hit me with it. If you ever land on atop this chest, you can attempt a lock pick, which I'll explain as we do it. Okay. But for the moment, none of you should be able to reach it. I mean, you could, I believe. Yeah, maybe. So what is our movement? It is your stamina. Stamina, okay. Stamina blow. Yep, so you have a movement of three. And so one last thing. Stamina, you have a stamina of three. Um, if you are resolving to not roll any dice in your turn, you can choose to double your movements. But you Ooh. can't roll any dice is like the one thing. The other thing I'll mention, <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. Other thing I'll mention is you could switch to bow form and throw your general combat dice if you wanted. And your range is equal to your stamina. So had you stopped there, you could hit the Spriggan or the Skeleton with your arrows. But if you'd like to run up to the chest, you can do that. Um, and then, so how these work, you clear the chip from the board because whether or not you're successful, it is the lock's broken or you open it. Either way, that chip's gone. Can use my ability. You can use your ability. So once for this battle, mm -hmm. I'm gonna automatically succeed at my lockpick check without rolling any dice. Yep. And then I can move up to five hexes. Yep. So you can use the ability, and you could escape right now. I have. <laughs> this is exactly what I did in our showing this off on live stream. 
Um, it doesn't give you a lot to choose. I, I, little spoiler, it doesn't give you a lot to choose from for uh, classes. Uh, That's all right. But if you would like to do a regular lockpick, uh, I can also show you that too. Yeah, I let's like do to that. How it works. Yeah, yeah, so. Then I'll succeed anyway. Yeah, yeah. So let's. So you grab the corresponding icon from Just there, right the top here. one, and keep it face down. So that is the lock that you're trying to pick. Put it right there. Uh, the number atop is telling you how many attempts you have to make on that lock. So you have three attempts, right. and you're trying to get six, three, one. And your three dice that you're rolling are those brown dice that are right there. So you're just going to give them a roll, and I'll explain further as you go. Well, there's a three and a one. So you've locked those in. You have one last dice. You have two more rolls. But what you can do at any time, you can always choose to take a light fatigue to bump that number up by one. And you can do that any number of times. Light fatigue are these light gray cubes that will just be placed in your cooldown track and sort of muddy up how quick you're getting your real dice back. So you have two more rolls, so it's probably better to reroll. Yeah. But right now you could just take two cubes if you wanted to open it right away. No, I have bad luck. Let's get this down to a one first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's better. All right, I'll yeah. take that and then... The light fatigue, so I have those set up. Uh, under the neoprene tray there, there is uh, one of these trays is full of just gray dust. Yeah, yeah. Or, these are technically cubes because it has to have faces on it to be called a uh. dice, I believe. Uh, so that, you take one to adjust it to a six. Here? Yep. Okay. And then you would get to flip it, and you have that card now. Okay. Okay. Uh since I'm at automatic, yeah, yeah. Speeding, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, for sure. You're just using your once per battle. Just yeah. remember you've used it. You got the king, the king's sandwich. Discard this item and heal each adventurer for two hit points. Oh, nice. All right. It's a cool sandwich. That's you're going nice to hold up sandwich. to, uh, you're going to hold Make up to kind of nice. I know, and it's a kingly sandwich because it helps everybody. All right. Uh, so that can, that's because gonna be kings are known for helping everyone. You can hold yeah, yeah. some of them. <laughs> uh, you can hold up to four items in your pack, or you can hold up to four items ready, and then an additional four items that are in your pack that can't be accessed during battle. And you can swap them out outside of battle or when you do a lock pick. Uh, so if you're using your race ability, you can move five spaces for free as part of that. Perfect. All right. So then play would pass to you. All right. Um, and since you have magic dice, I'll explain them a bit. Okay. So the blue is your magic stat, and that is going to determine how many magic-based dice you can roll. And as long as the dice do not say the word adjacent on them as far as a target, you can target based on your magic stat as well. So you can hit something three hexes away with your magic uh, stat. That's what I was wondering, because I was like, oh, no, I only have two stamina. Yep. But I've got this lovely magic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that. So you could move up and definitely blast see. the skeleton. I think you could also blast the Spriggan if you preferred. Yeah, let's go. Oh, I'll explain their abilities too, so you can target things properly and not just uh, hoping. So the Spriggan here, the little heart is going to determine its health. So it spawned with four health. Now this is tracking its health. The little two here is going to tell you how much range it has. It will hit things that are within two hexes of it. Okay. Um, the little number in the fire there is how many attack dice it will throw. So it does not throw any. Um, this guy throws one. This guy throws one. Um, this number is how much you have to hit it for before you get to start hitting its health. So every time you do an engage with this character, you will have to deal at least one damage before you get to hit its meaty bits. Got it. Uh, this little skull with the horns, that's just telling you it's a Daedra enemy. This one over here, the skull is a humanoid, and then if it had a little crab claw, that means it's a beast. The one means it's a level one enemy. Ones share sides with fives. So when you're drawing enemy pools, you just want to make sure you're drawing the correct side. Got it. Um, the name is right below that. And then to the right is how many people it will hit if it is able to. So if there were two people, it'll hit two people. All right. If, it, if there are three in range, it's only going to hit two, but it's going to choose its preference. So it has an arrow up, so it choose to target healthier folks. Arrow down means it's going to target weaker folks. Um, and then down here are its abilities. The skeleton doesn't have any abilities because he's got a high defense. Uh, the Spriggan here has Bane. That's why it doesn't roll any attack dice. It will just poison you instead. So. Yeah. 
poison's yeah. not great. I'll explain it if it happens. <laughs> um, and then enfeeble means that when it attacks you, it is going to give you that many light fatigue as it attacks you. So this guy will give you one. Some of the enemies will give you like up to four, I believe. That's pretty rough. Nice. Yeah. But yeah. So now you know All right. what seems scariest to you. Well, let's... <laughs> let's uh let's let's target this spriggan perfect and you can throw up to three magic dice you only have two right yeah well, i can't use this one though right nope those can be rolled in any form except for magic got it okay oh and you would set yourself as part of your engage you would get to choose your battle form to got throw it. magic you will have to be in magic form all right I am in magic form. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to roll these. Okay, right. so. So consult your little thing there. So for for this one, I deal two damage to my target. So the defense prevents one of that. And for this one, I gain two tenacity and deal one true, dam true damage to any adventurer. Okay, so adventurers are you guys. Destruction yes. staff is a very uh, big attacks that can backfire. It's a mixed so bag. This is a backfire. So basically, yeah. tenacity, that one's giving you two misses worth of misses, but you do have to hit somebody on your team. Okay. Um, so you don't really help have to resolve that die if you don't want to. It uh, would still move to your cooldown because you've rolled it, right. but if you don't like the result, you don't have to use it unless otherwise stated. Now, what is what is Tenacity. Tenacity is what you're, yeah, it's your mistrack there. It's what you're going to be using to use your class abilities once you have a class. Got it. Oh, yeah. So I don't want that at all. Yeah. Right yeah. now it's, I mean, all you right, would be gonna... able to translate that tenacity into the main game. But, yeah, for the sake of this short demo, yeah. you're not going to use yeah. that. So. All right. So we'll do two damage to the target. So I poked him for one because he's got one defense. Right, so he's right. down to three. And this goes in my cooldown? Yep. All right. Those would go in in the order of your resolution. So, so that'll matter a bit more once it's... So oh, yeah. I would have resolved that one first, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, right now you're going to clear them both anyways, but in the future, if you have a longer cooldown, it's going to matter more. Okay. And that cooldown can definitely fill. Because one last thing, if you wanted to be a bit defensive, you could choose to take a second engage. So if you take a second engage, that lets you... You can't move again. Right. That's never an option. But you can change your battle form and roll that, you know, roll up to that many dice again. So if you had more magic dice, you could stay in magic, throw three more magic dice. If you wanted, you could move to defensive form, throw that combat dice up as a shield. Got it. Right okay. now, I don't know how necessary that is. Yeah, the skeleton's I think gonna I'm... hit that guy, and poison can't be blocked. Yeah, so. I'm I'm good with this. All right. Oh, but taking a second engage does cost a light fatigue. That's the downside. Uh, so yeah. block up your track, and also you won't have much to roll next turn, is the idea. I did a damage. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We're all so proud of you. Does your yes. battle form only apply to your offense? Um, some, some items will care about what battle form you're in outside of your turn. Um, and some enemies might. I don't know offhand about that one. But, like, there are... There, you can pick up like shields and armors that have an ability that triggers when you get attacked. And that sometimes cares about your form. Okay. <laughs> but mostly it's for attacks and for limiting what dice you can throw with what other dice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's up Check to you. Dice over there. So we'll get in there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, All right, Argonian. So what is the range on my bow here? Uh, Equal to stamina. Equal to stamina. So three range. Okay, so one, two, three. You have three movement as well. Um, you're the fastest in the party, and you are also the fastest. Technically, you're just the slowest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead. I'm a slow. Yeah, and you can roll up to three stamina-based dice. I'll shoot the sprig and try to... Nice. Right, that, that roll should kill it. <laughs> that roll has killed it for sure. So, your archery dice have the ability to ignore one defense. And then they also deal the damage that's printed on them. So you've done one, two, three, four, and ignored two defense, which he has one. Spriggan is dead. You have killed the Spriggan. I will give this to you just to track that. Uh, and then normally in a normal battle, you just keep your dead off to the side until the end, in which they're shuffled back into the bag. Some enemies will have a skill called Necromancy, where that's important, where they will just resurrect dead things from the stack. 
those enemies are rough to deal with. So, unless you want to take a second engage, which you shouldn't, you have no <laughs> dice to roll. Um, those would all move to your cooldown in, in the order of your choice, basically, because they were all at the same time. But whichever ones you want to get back first, you should slot in most to the left. Uh, so now all the enemies will act. They will act based on threat level. They're all threat level one. So then you as players would get to choose. I'm just going to run through it because uh, it gets easier. So this skeleton here is going to act first because he's just right next to you. He's going to roll one attack dice. So attack dice are in the tray there. They are, they look like this dice, but black. So yes, right there. Do you? So the enemies roll the exact same dice as you. They are dark, and the one difference is they don't have misses on them. So these are also what you will be rolling as players if anything ever says roll extra combat dice or like or bonus combat dice. So Got it. This can be rolled against the Khajiit. So that's you. So, yeah, go for it. That is one damage to the Khajiit. I'll just keep it in a stack. And then, that guy has acted, he's done. And also, he would like to hit two people. He's he's already got a target before that, he's not going to bother moving to try and hit two people. He would like to hit the person with the lowest health, he's not going to seek that person out if there's someone hanging out right here for him. Got it. Um, if, he, if this guy was just not there at all, he can move up to two. So, pop, pop, he'd get up there, do that. Um, but all enemies in the game move up to two unless something else is doing something. Well, thankfully, the Argonian has become a meat shield for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then this Argonian bandit wants to hit two people, and he likes to hit the highest health. Um, his range is three, so he currently has no targets. So he is going to move. Um, he will only move as far as he will to hit a target. These are equidistant away, so he's going to go for higher health. He's going to move one. And then he currently has a target. So he's not going to keep moving, even though if he moved one more, he would have two targets. So it's just, you basically run down a checklist in your head of just like, does he have a target? Does he have a target? He has a target. Stop. Like, so he has a target. He's just going to shoot that Argonian. He throws one of those. And he's going to give the Argonian one light fatigue. So he gives you the light fatigue. And then he's going to roll that black die against you. Or one. Loop. And then we would move the round counter die over there next to those dials to two. And then we'd be on to round two. And play would again start with the player. There's technically a start of turn. And then you would cool down. So you would remove that light fatigue from your cooldown if it was still there. You would remove up to two dice. Or not up to two. It would be the leftmost two. So I gotta move these back up here? Once your turn starts. Once my turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's up to you now, so. So I can attack that skeleton. You sure can. And you can roll up to three stamina-based dice at once. All right, so I, it's a matter if it's a sword or an ax. Um, so for your combat form, it doesn't matter. So if you're in one-handed, you can, you can only throw these in one-handed. Oh. But these can be thrown in one-handed as well. So you sword could. One-handed ax is two-handed. Um, yeah, so these are two-handed dice, so these orange guys. But basically, the combat are kind of just generic, count, like fighting proficiency, so they can be rolled in any non-magic form. So you can pepper one of those in with your two one-handed dice if you would like. All right. So I can just roll two of them at once. You could roll just the two. You could add in another one. Yeah. He has two defense, and those the oh, hit pieces yeah, on there are them. four ones, one two, and one miss. So you. Probably want to roll three dice just to try and chip past the defense. You have not chipped past the defense. So you get it, you get to track that tenacity, and then that one hand dice gets to slot into an active slot. So the one that did hit for the one hand and shield, you get to pop into one of these slots. No, the other one, the, uh, oh, yes. So now that is acting as a shield based on the sheet there. So that'll prevent up to one or two if it was on the two face damage. As soon as it does that, you'll move it down to the cooldown. If you'd like, you can just choose to move it down to the cooldown as well. Just can only do that on your turn. Um, so you hit two of his defense. He has two defense. He's he's good. He's he takes no damage. 
Okay. Um, on turn. to our Breton Mage, right, who so has start good. of turn and then cool down. And then I'm going to move right here, and I'm going to target the bandits. Yeah, blast that bandit. Yeah. Uh, bandit blaster. Oh, ho! Four damage. Four damage. So one defense, three health. That's a dead bandit. You do a kill. I have that over there to track I for you. You do it. I, you know, I believed in you. Those move to cooldown. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, unless you want to do something else, you can pass turn. Yeah, go go for it. So these two go up, and then I will do. And you are definitely the person to attack the skeleton because you have the defense ignoring dice. Also, dice will always, they're always loaded into the right and they just move over, just always cycling through. Okay. So you ignore two defense and hit for two damage. Perfect. Boom. That's a dead skeleton. Dead skeleton. There you go. Dead so, bones. Unlike bones, if you're familiar with bones, combat doesn't end immediately. You still complete each player's turn. So if that treasure chest hadn't been lockpicked, someone could make for it and try to lock it. Um, everyone else gets like a cooldown, so nobody's getting left out in a turn order, even if there's no enemies left to fight. Sometimes like here, that doesn't make any sense, but other times it makes a bit more sense. Um, but you have all finished, you moved and attacked, right? Yes. Okay, cool. That's all good. I was just making sure, because otherwise, if you hadn't, you could move now and you could escape. It should be great, but you move for turn. Uh, it, all right, so. You completed the scenario. You completed the yeah. scenario. So if you would like to hand me this here. All right. Um, so how this scenario works is you'd have all your little achievements checklist here. Well, achievements checklist here. Um, don't, don't look at this if you don't want spoilers for what the scenario cares about, but... Um, for this, so defeat high elf bandits. I don't believe we pulled the high elf bandits. No. Nope. Defeat the skeever pup. We also didn't pull them. Defeat the Argonian bandits. We have one over there. Yep. Uh, defeat skeever pup. Nope. Defeat Skellington and Spriggan. Are right here. Succeed at a cash lock pick. Escape first. Nobody escaped. Take the first turn. That's you. Take the last turn. That's you. First to take damage from an enemy at range two plus. Uh, did anybody take, you did, yes. Yeah, I did. And then first Get, to take damage from an enemy at range one. Um, that was you. So then we would pop over here and we get to see what you get to choose from. So the person who got to the Argonian bandit yep. has the ability to look at the acrobat and the scout class sheet. Um, let me see here. Whoever defeated the Skeleton gets to look at the Necromancer and the Spell Sword. The Spriggan, you get to look at the Pilgrim and the Templar. Ooh. Lockpick, you get to look at the Burglar, which is a Valenwood class. That's the, that's the add-on. Um, or the Rogue. Escape first would be Bard Ranger. Nobody did that. Taking the first turn will let you look at the Dragon Knight. Taking the last turn will let you take the Healer. First to take damage from an enemy at range 2+, plus would let you do the Archer. First take damage from any range one, you get to take the knights. So that is the jailbreak scenario. And then you would kind of, you would choose a class, you'd set the XP back up to two, like normal. And then you would clear your cooldown. Normally you wouldn't clear your cooldown after a combat. Right. So that's also a thing where you just can't go as hard as you want at the end because you're taking this clogged up cooldown into your next fight, unless right. you head to an inn um, or something along those lines. So I think that's interesting that yeah. you don't even get your class until after you complete the first adventure tutorial, and then yeah. and then who how you played it determines what classes yeah. are available to you. Yeah, that's very very cool. I now agree. again, you can if that's not your flavor, you fully can open to just jump in. Uh, okay, just pick a class, set your your XP to two. I think hit, that's hit pretty the cool. Yeah, it's it's a really good way to onboard because the combat is definitely the meat of the game. Mm -hmm. Like it is the hardest to grok of anything, and and you ran through it efficiently, quickly. Yeah, that's a way to pick it up quick because I think the game is complex, but it's very 
we dole it out in like bits and pieces here and there. So like once you visit your first town, you would have the ability to take on additional skills. So like that adds another layer of complexity because you'd get another sheet. Um, whenever you gain experience, so if you had like two XP to spend, you could buy dice for slots. So if you have level one dice, you now have access to buying these level two dice. Now you can start thinking about the other things on your sheet. If you have a level two dice in your mat, you can now start thinking about level three dice. It's pretty cool. Um, and then once you get to an adventure proper, how those are run, I'll just give you a brief rundown on those. Um, again, you would take all your guild cards here. We have every guild, or I don't know if we have every guild in the game. I shouldn't say that. This is every race in the game. I know that one. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of guilds. The Undaunted are an ESO guild, so if they sound unfamiliar, they're from the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, and then the Outer Watch is a guild that we created for the game. So again, if they sound unfamiliar, it's because we have created them. I believe Eyes of the Queen is also something that was created for online. They, I don't think they ever had a sigil and we were able to create their sigil for oh, them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's the, the guy who made Eyes of the Queen was like really pleased with the sigil, which is cool. Nice. Um, so you would shuffle up all your guild cards. You would deal out three. These are, these are three factions that have, that you have the option to take a contract with. So there's the Dark Brotherhood, Eyes of the Queen, Circle of Champions. Then you as a group would be like, we should take this contract um, based on the region that you have chosen. So I have Western Black Marsh set aside here, but the game will also come with Skyrim, Morrowind, um, Cyrodiil, and High Rock. And then oh. the first expansion comes with Valenwood. Um, and then future expansions will come with more regions. We're doing them region-based for expansions. Um, so but, there's a ton of content in this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So each of the guilds, so there's, uh, I believe, 10. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's nine guilds. There's five regions. There's quests for each guild in each region. Nice. Uh, so, for instance, if you took the Eyes of the Queen quest in Black Marsh, I don't, that's probably high complexity. Probably wouldn't suggest it for a first time. I don't know. Eyes of the Queen are usually higher complexity because they're like the CIA of the Elder Scrolls world. So nice. Their, their dealings are somewhat behind the shadows and a little questionable. Um, but each of the regions has their own mechanics. So in Black Marsh, it'll outline it on the inside of this booklet here which will go over all the weather. Black Marsh is very much about weather. The weather will become flooding or rainy. It'll be harder to traverse. You'll take on more light fatigue or over fatigue. Um, and usually those missions make you go all over the map to really make you feel the, the minus in your movement. Um, each of the towns in the regions is outlined here. So any town you go to will have its own unique characteristics. Um, different trainers available in them, different items available in them, such and such, different other effects. But then in the back, you have all of the quest lines. So the Eyes of the Queen. You check your little index here. You see Eyes of the Queen. That's on page 22. Check out page 22. You get your little introduction, this little brown square. This is what the, this is what the quest is here. Up here, you've got the number of the quest, the complexity. So this is a complexity two. Missions range from complexity one to three, or quests range from complexities one to three. So two is like middle. Um, this is the name of the guild it's attached to, the name of the thing, uh, Dark Lifelines. And then session snapshot gives you an overview of what your entire goal is for the entire quest. Because quests can be completed in 12 days, and we don't want to have you kind of going quest step to quest step, wondering when the last step is suddenly going to be sprung on you. So here's an overview of like, here's the ultimate thing you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and then over here, you've got like, this is attached to the quest as well, of like what's important that's going to happen there. But once you complete whatever the thing is for quest step one, it will tell you where to go next. So none of the other steps are outlined at the front because we want to keep it secret from you you're directed where to go in the book beyond the first nice. quest step. Um, if you are able to accomplish and complete your quest, for instance, if you got all the way through your Eyes of the Queen thing, it would tell you, you'd get a little wrap up, probably tells you Deslander is behind something and that you want to continue researching her. And then it will be like, 
you should probably check out Skyrim as the Thieves Guild or such and such. So there's, it gives you three options for your next quest. And then there is an end game quest as well. Yeah. So very nice. That's and the, it looks like the scales, does this scale uh, good for solo as well? Yeah, so it's largely, so the difference here is that it's just based on how much experience you have accumulated as a party. So at solo, it's going to be how much you've experienced times your player count. So it's always going to be one times whatever. So it scales pretty well. And then also some of the cards, I believe every card at this point, if you look at, again, the Wabajack attack card, uh, it probably has a thing on it. If you look at the back, yeah, it says something about that red square is if you are at a higher player count, it does an extra very mean thing to you. Oh, wow. Um, so Each this... adventurer must replace their current race with a different one drawn at random. <laughs> Wild. You got you got changed by the Wabajack. <laughs> it's, that's Fantastic. pretty funny. I dig that. Um, but yeah, so... We really tried to make it so that this plays at every every size pretty similar. Like, we don't want any play count to feel like it's too easy or too hard. Nice. Um, I think we landed in a really good place with that as well. It definitely kind of has, the, I mean, obviously the, the jailbreak scenario has, yeah. has that feel, that yeah. Elder Scrolls feel. But, like, also the way you were describing how to, to go through the, like, it's just like that. Yeah. Where, like... There's no, there's no like really one super strong throughput. You can just yeah. kind of feel your way through the world yeah. like that. Um, yeah. And so many people have asked for like, what is the never ending version of this game? I was like, I don't, that doesn't exist. We will always restrict it to 12 days unless there is like a massive demand for like endless play. But like the game plays in a way you want it. Like it plays in the time you want it to play. I play this game probably more than anyone at this point, just demoing it with people. And it plays in the appropriate time that you want to sit with it. Nice. Uh, your character gets to scale up. By the end of session three, this mat is like chock full of dice. You don't want to do anything else with that character because they're perfect. You can now retire them and get a new one. <laughs> you guys are about to uh, fulfill the, the Kickstarter or the, the crowd? Yeah, so we're still on track to start fulfillment uh, at the end of October. Okay. Hoping to have the... The container should be in state end of October awesome. or in awesome. country end of October. And then available on your website afterwards. Yeah. No. It will, as soon as we are, usually it's like when we're about halfway through fulfillment, we put it up for pre-orders, I believe. Uh, but right now is the time to get it. Uh, late pledges are discounted. Uh, oh, yeah. The game has... Uh, hit every stretch goal we could conceive of, so it will cost more now. Um, I believe the MSRP is going to be two twenty-five. Yes. Through the campaign, it's one ninety-five with free shipping, um, which is good because the game costs oh, yeah. weighs twenty-three pounds. Yeah, it's yeah. Probably going to cost a lot to ship. <laughs> well, fantastic! I'm glad we finally got a chance to look at this. Yeah. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting my hands on on the copy that I backed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll try to get more more coverage of this as you get closer to release. For sure. And everything you see here is included. That card tray comes in the game. Nice. That little dial comes in the game. A bunch Fantastic. of just, I believe, eight pieces of art for every race to choose from. Like, it's a beefy game. Beefy right. Well, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, thanks so really much for sitting with me. Really good. Really good.